Hi, I'm Dave Whitehead. I'm the Vice President of Research and Development at Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. Welcome to part two of the video series explaining how to configure the SELT400L. Now that we've completed the communication settings, let's take a closer look at our application. We're protecting a 120 mile, 500 kV line terminated on two breakers with bushing CTs having 800 to five and 1,000 to five ratios. The CT ratios are therefore 160 and 200 respectively. The nominal secondary voltage is 120 volts phase to phase, so the PT ratio is 500,000 over 120, which is 4,166.67. Assume the positive sequence line impedance is 3.11 ohms and secondary 84 degrees. Assume the zero sequence impedance is 9.02 ohms, secondary 78 degrees. The system is a 60 hertz system with ABC rotation. Let's go back to the quick set program and enter the line parameters. We enter the positive sequence impedance magnitude as 3.11 ohms and the angle as 84 degrees. Similarly, we enter the zero sequence impedance magnitude as 9.02 ohms and the angle as 78 degrees. Next, we'll need to provide the line length and the units of choice. We'll use miles rather than kilometers, therefore we enter 120 as the line length and we select miles for the line length units. The above data are expected in any line relay and are easy to obtain from any internal utility database of assets or any short circuit program that you're familiar with. Now we'll move to the traveling wave settings. The TWLPT stands for Traveling Wave Line Propagation Time. This is the one-way travel time for a traveling wave from one line terminal to the opposite line terminal. Electric waves propagate on overhead transmission lines close to the speed of light in free space at about 98% of 180,000 miles per second. So we can approximate TWLPT for our 120 mile line as 120 over 0.98 times 180,000, which is 680.27 microseconds. We need the setting for the traveling wave differential protection and for the traveling wave fault locator. It's a critical setting. We ask the user to measure this value when commissioning the relay by closing the breaker to energize a line and measure the round trip traveling wave time for the wave that comes back reflected from the open line end. Use the SEL T400L high resolution DFR and the synchro wave plotting software to perform this line test. For now, let's enter 680.27 microseconds as TWLPT, but remember to put a note in your documentation to ask the commissioning crew to perform the test and update the setting. Finally, we enter the secondary reactance of the inline capacitance. Our line is not series compensated, so we'll leave the XC value as zero. EXTSC stands for external series compensation. The SEL T400 manual gives a specific rule for how to decide if a particular series capacitor in a vicinity is or is not an adjacent capacitor demanding this setting to be set to yes. We don't have any external capacitors and we set this setting to no. And that takes care of the line configuration settings. But before we move to protection elements, we need to finish entering the basic nameplate data to allow the relay to understand the power system. First, we'll configure the AC inputs of the relay. In order to convert the impedance settings to RL values and allow other functions, we need to tell a relay the nominal system frequency. Our application is a 60 hertz system, so we select 60 as our frequency. Some auxiliary SEL T400L functions, such as the built-in LOP logic, needs symmetrical components. We need to tell the relay the phase sequence to let it understand which sequence is positive and which is negative. Our application is in the ABC phase rotation, so we set the rotation to ABC. The line source setting allows us to use the current input W, X, or a combination. Our line is terminated on two breakers, so we will select COMB as the source setting and we will wire both CTs individually to our relay. Now we'll set the CT ratios. Assume we wired 800 to 5 CT to the W input, so we enter 160 as the CTRW ratio. We wire 1,000 to 5 CT to the X input, so we enter 200 as the CTRX ratio. The relay compensates for the mismatch, and the effective ratio is the higher value of 1,000 to 5 in this case. Remember that we enter the secondary impedance values under the line configuration, and they were on the 1,000 to 5 CT base. We enter our PT ratio as 4,166.67. And finally, we enter 120 volts as a secondary nominal phase-to-phase -phase voltage. 
And remember to save your settings from time to time so you don't lose your work. Okay, we've now finished our line configuration settings as well as settings for the AC inputs. In the next video, we'll take a look at all the protection settings on the SELT400L. Thanks for watching.